if you get overwhelmed writing a machine learning code from scratch, then this particular video is going to be very helpful for you. In this video, I'm going to cover a regression machine learning code guide, which will help you to solve or write a regression machine learning problem statement from scratch. But before we dive in, hey, my name is Kunal Ak. I'm the founder of Data Science Masterminds, and I am on a mission to help you learn and apply data science effectively to grow in your career. So please subscribe to my channel and hit that bell button so that you get notified whenever I release a new video such as this one. So let's dive in. Okay, so I have two different windows open with me. One is the guide and one is the solution that I have written in another video where I have completely solved a regression machine learning problem, the Mercedes Benz Greener Manufacturing one. So both of them are available. You can also watch the video on how I wrote this particular code. I'll place a link in the comment section below. And also you'll have a link for this particular guide where you can refer it or download the PDF to keep uh, as a reference for you to uh, use as a guide when you're solving problems. So let's get started. Now this is going to be a regression problem statement that we're going to solve. And we typically begin with importing some packages. Now within this particular code, if you notice, I have imported certain packages, not in this particular order, but you'll see that most of the packages that I require, I'll first import them here. Whichever order of the packages you choose, that will be also fine. But the next step that we're going to do is import the data, which is the next obvious step. So I'm going to go to this step where we import the data. This is the step that we do it. And uh, we import the train data and the test data in a Kaggle kind of a situation. But in business situations where you will have your train data and validation to data together, where you have the actuals present with you. In business cases, you'll see that you will have a test or a prediction data set within which there will be no predictions. You are going to predict something into the future and that particular data set will be available with you without the why. And so we need to import both of this and whatever we do to the train data set, we should be able to do to the test data set or the prediction data set. Moving on, it's time to check our data, the ones that we imported. And so we're going to do the checks using these functions that is pd.info, pd.describe, head, tail. And we just check the data in general to know if there is some inconsistencies and, and deal with the data accordingly. Then we also check the target data and in the regression situation, we need to know if there are outliers or if it is in normal distribution or not and work out accordingly. So if I go back to the code, I typically check the data with head, info, sometimes with described for this one, I kept it short. And next we check in regression, the Y column and see if there are outliers. In this case, there are outliers. So what we have done is we've written a code which identifies the outliers and then whatever outliers exist, we just simply drop them in this particular scenario. So that's the next step where, you know, for the target column, we are just identifying the outliers and deleting it. You can choose to cap it or do other some strategies on top of it. But for now, we just dropped it for this particular example. Next, it is time for us to check some missing values. But in our case, we don't have any missing values, so I've not done that particular check for this particular code. And so we have moved directly into this, this step where we divide our data into X and Y. And so this is how it's going to be looking like. We take the train data, we take the Y from it, and then the rest of the columns, excluding the ID column, we take it into X. Similarly, we also create an X data set where we take we remove the ID and take all of the variables and notice this one will not have Y and that's what we need to predict, right? That's what the competition is about. And so we do this particular step to ensure that we are going to not only train our data, but also use our model to predict on the test data. After we have divided into X and Y, now is the time to apply our validation strategy. So the validation strategy comes after we do the X and Y step and I'm just going to shift this step here. So we basically take the X and Y data that we created for the train data and split it into, let's say 20% of test split and 80% of train data. Notice we've taken the X and Y and 
x and y that we have from the train and now we're going to split it into x train x validation y train y validation now the reason we do this is we're going to build our model on the train data and since with the validation data set we'll have some portion of actual validation data set so we can build our model on the train data and then predict on the validation data set and then compare the actuals and the predictions to ascertain if we have a good model that is by comparing the train and the validation performance. In another video, I'm going to show you how to do the cross validation strategy. For now, this is a basic strategy that you can start off with and evolve as you learn or master new new methods. Next part is we do the validation strategy. We do train test split and we do 2080 split and move on to the next step, which is identifying numerical and categorical features. The reason we identify numerical and categorical features upfront is that we have to deal with them separately, either transformation or encoding. And so it's better that we divide them upfront so that we can deal with it the way we want. We do this particular step by using the select underscore D types function in pandas. And we can say include is equal to number dot columns dot values to get the numerical features. Similarly, we can say for categorical, we can say exclude is equal to number and get all the categorical features. So once we have all of the numerical and categorical features, we can now treat missing values and then move on to doing categorical. So in this particular step, you will see that I have written get categorical and numerical feature names. Here I've taken all of the numerical features and included all the num numerical features and I just got all of the column names in this particular. And similarly, the categorical features, I just changed this bit to exclude and I got all the categorical. So ideally after this particular step, we should be doing the missing value treatment. However, we have not done it in this particular sequence because there is some other step that we need to take care before we can do this. So if you have any missing values in your data, treat them before you go to the next step. Then we move on to doing categorical encoding and categorical encoding is done in two steps. One we deal with low cardinality features, the ones that have less than 10 values within that column and columns that have greater than 10 that are high cardinality features. I can, you can decide what is high cardinality, low cardinality, but I've chosen just 10 for this particular example. For low cardinality features, we do one hot encoding and for high cardinality features, we do ordinal encoding. And so let's see how that's going to be looking like. So I go to the categorical encoding. I first declare this instance and I say handle unknown and unknown values np nan. And so notice that we generate some missing values because while we are doing ordinal encoding, what happens is that the train data set might have, let's say category A, B, C, D. And it might turn out that in the test data set, we have A, B, C, D, E, F, and G, which are extra categories that come. So if our transformation should be done or encoding should be done on that test data. How should the transformation or encoding get handled? And so we told that, hey, handle any of the unknown categories as use encoded value. And we just replace it by mean so that we can later treat them using missing value treatment and impute it with, let's say, a more strategy or constant value. So that's what we do. We create an instance of it. We then fit it and then transform the train data, transform the validation data, transform the test data. And all of this gets done in these three lines of code. Now notice we can also choose to do fit transform, but that will not be the way to go forward in production. It typically needs to be fitted and then you transform all of the other data sets based on that fit. Next, in this particular step, Categorical encoding, the ordinal encoder generates some missing values. That is because of this unknown categories that we have. So what we do is we do the missing value treatment again after this particular step. Now, in case you had missing values, you'll do it once. And then after you do categorical encoding with ordinal encoding, you'll do it again. So this time, how do we do the missing value? We basically again declare an instance of it. And this time the strategy is just going to be median. So I'm just going to take the median of all of the features that exist within the data 
and just impute it with the median. We can use any other strategies, but to keep it simple, I've just gone with median for now. So the steps is same. You declare an instance, you fit it, and then transform train, transform validation, transform test. We have one more step of pre-processing left, and that is going to be the transformations. Now this is going to be purely applied on numerical variables and good that we have divided our numerical features up front. So now we can do some transformation using the SQLM pre-processing package and we can do normalizing standard scalar, min max scalar and quantile scalar. Now there is this step which is this outlier step which we typically do but in this step I have not done outliers but in case you are working with and you see there are outliers within your numerical features you're going to use the outlier transformation also. So since I've covered this step earlier on, I'm just not going to cover this step, but after categorical encoding, you can choose to do numerical transformation, then outlier treatment, outlier and numerical transformation. Both of them have their advantages, disadvantages, but for now, we're just going to do numerical transformation and I'm going to do standard scalar for this example. So the process is same. As you can see here, we typically just create an instance of it, fit it on the X-train data and then say transform, transform, transform and we have our transform data. And so numerical transformation is done for a regression kind of a problem. The next problem is dimensionality, which is in this particular problem statement, there are around 350 features and that is going to definitely mess with the predictions. And so we need to reduce the dimensionality and for that we have this package feature selection sklearn.feature selection and we're going to use the feature selection select k best method. So we take this method here and we create an instance of it. So the mutual info and k is equal to 10 basically takes the top 30 cumulative impact of the feature on the y and then select those 30 features. So we're just going to fit it on train and this time it requires the y data also because it should give, give us the mutually benefited features that have that exist. So we're going to do that and then we transform the X train, X validation and X test. And notice we don't give the Y because the Y is something that we need to predict. So it should be able to transform it without the Y. So the step till now are the data pre-processing. And here's the fun part. Here's the modeling part that we're going to do. So the steps look like this. You ideally need to choose a model. And for this particular example, you're going to choose linear regression. You can either choose to do all of them all of the models that are there and see which one works for you but you can just begin with one and then work your way to doing multiple different models and picking the ones that works for your data so we take a linear regression we go down to this step here we create an instance of it and then we fit it using the x train and y train data so we do that we fit our model and then this is the fit part of it and then we do predictions on top of the train data and on the test data and also on the validation data. So we have three different predictions and each of them are going to have their own purpose. So the first one, we're going to compare the Y train with the Y train predictions that we created. And so in this case, this will just give us the training performance. Next, we're going to compare the validation Y with the validation prediction. This will give us the validation performance. So we have this R squared for this particular example. And so model performance, we require the R square metric. And so we have imported these packages. And so we write these two codes and it will give us, let's say 0.6295, 0 0.6290, which is close enough. And we have created a good model. In case there is a large difference between these, then you want to go back and reduce the number of features and come back to this step and see if your R squared are almost close to each other. And so once we have our R squared, next step is export your predictions. In Kaggle situation, you want to just give the ID and Y. In production, you want to give maybe the entire data set with the predictions or just ID and Y and put it into production. So here in this case, again, we're going to use pandas. We create a dictionary with the test ID column and the Y prediction column, which we got out of the model. So all of this work that we did, we just got this particular column. Here. And so we combined them together into a pandas data frame called submission. This is how it's going to be looking like. And then finally export the submission to either submit it into comp competition or for business 
you need to put it into a database that can be used by the teams or dashboarding teams to put your outcomes on the dashboards or can be present. With this particular guide, you know now how to write a machine learning regression code from scratch. Now, if I have missed any steps or if you have any other questions, you want to put that into the comment section and I'll try my best to answer those questions. As for the next step is concerned, I'm going to create another video which will go through the flow of creating a cross-validation strategy and improve your model performance.